the retro quilter and today I'm going to show you how to use up some of your leftover orange peel pieces quite possibly from your pop and posies or your retro ribbon quilts and we are going to make ta-da some orange peel applique flowers let's get going okay so to start I have a 15 inch square here and depending on what you want to do that may vary. So if you wanted to do a pillow, it might be bigger. If you were doing something else, maybe smaller, but I'm just gonna do 15 inch squares. And I'm just gonna show you a little example here. So I've already got a couple blocks done. Now I am using the quilt as you go method for this. Uh, I have another video on that you can check out as well. So what I've done here is I've actually quilted it first and then appliqued my uh, orange peel blocks and center on in a flower motif after. And what I'm going to do in this example is applique these petals on first and then do the quilt as you go method. So I'm alternating them. So to do that, Let's fold our square in half, and we're just gonna give it a little crease in the middle. And then we're gonna do it again with another little crease in the middle. So that's just gonna tell us now where our center is. And we are going to use that as a guide for placement. So all I'm doing is just figuring out where I want my petals. I think I want that a little bit more down to the crease. Okay, so I like this. Got a center here. Let's just see how that's gonna look. Okay, so now I will say that because this little area here can get quite tight if you're doing this layout, um, you're gonna want the center <laughs> to cover it up potentially. Mine got a little bunchy in there. If you were not going to put a center over top, you might wanna just spread it out a little bit more. Now, because this is applique, and I am, like I said, doing the quilt as you go method for a little quilt here, um, this, is, this is the method, but because it's applique, you can basically put these on anything. You can put this on the back of a jean jacket. You could put it on a tote bag. I mean, the sky's the limit, really. So what I'm gonna do now, I have my little mini Roxanne glue. You can use any glue, even Elmer's glue, really. Because all I wanna do, I'm just using this as a base just a tiny bit to hold it in place for when I take it over to my sewing machine. And what I've done with these patterned orange peel petals is I've used a zigzag stitch around to secure them down with the white petals that I have. I used a blanket stitch. Now, alternately, you can use something like steam a seam, um, some sort of interfacing and do raw edge applique in which you would just do a top stitch very close to the edge as possible. If that's the case, you would definitely want to use an interfacing like seam esteem, seam esteem, say that 10 times fast, um, so that it helps with the fraying. B 
because I'm not using that, I do know that I am going to get a little bit of fraying around the edges, whether or not I do a really good job of zigzagging or blanket stitch after it washes, it will fray a little bit. Okay, let's take it over. Okay, so since I'm doing a zigzag stitch, I have put it on 1-10 on my Baby Lack Crescendo, and we're going to start in the middle here, down here in the bottom of the petal. Why? Because if there's a little bit of a back and forth that you want to do to secure your stitch or what have you, that'll get covered up when we put our center on, okay? Um, also, Sometimes it takes a few stitches before you're really centered in knowing where your needle is headed when you are doing a zigzag stitch or a blanket stitch of the sort. And this gives you a little bit of wiggle room to figure that out. Okay. So I am actually going to back stitch at the beginning and the end. And ideally, you want to take your time and hit it so that that needle, when it's going to the outside, it is going to hit the edge of your petal. Okay. I've gotten to the point, the top point of my orange petal. And what ideally you would like to do is have the needle so it's on the inner part of your zigzag. And then I'm going to lift up my presser foot and turn it. So now it's going to hit the outside edge when I continue on. Okay, so that's one down. I'm gonna finish this up, put my center on and zigzag around my center. And there we go. Simple, fun. I gave it a good press after I did the petals and before I put on the center. And then once it was all on, I gave it a press again. Now this is ready to prep for my quilt as you go and put it all together. Ta-da! And out of all of my leftover scraps, I have made this entire top, which is absolutely so awesome. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, friends. And until next time, keep it quilty. Cool